For the longest time, this Apple 35 watt charger was the best charger. It was the fastest. But after testing two dozen plus new chargers, this is now number 10. To come out with my top five, I tested all my chargers against 12 different criteria, ranging from solo device charging, max device charging, temperature, price, and charging protocols. And as an extra, the best bang for your buck charger is also in the top five, so keep watching. Number five is this. This is the Ehohi, I don't know how to pronounce it, Mag Cube PD. It's a 40 watt charger. The first time I heard of this brand was a few years ago. They sent me a package with this thing and they demanded that I review it. It looks cool, but I'm a reviewer, not an influencer. But in the process of trying to figure out what the best charger is, this little yellow thing caught my eye. So I bought it and tested it and it's actually really good. This thing is one of the smallest chargers in my group, but despite its size, it is actually one of the easiest ones to remove from a socket. The average charger has a bunch of smooth sides, so it's really hard to pull them out out of sockets. But with this Aohi charger, the sides are indented in, so it gives your fingers a little bit more uh, to hold on to. Now, one of the coolest things with this product is that there's an indicator light. Now, indicator lights aren't special per se, but this one is green when it's plugged in. It goes orange when power is being drawn from it, and when the device is full, it goes back to green. I just think that's pretty cool. Now when it comes to charge speed, the MagCube does well with individual device charging, providing better than average charge speeds, but suffers a bit when you're trying to charge two larger devices. Another downside is that this driver ran hotter than most, so do keep that in mind. So this charger, if all you're doing is charging a small uh, tablet or a smartphone, it's gonna be great. But if you're charging a smartphone with a larger tablet, this, uh, this little guy is gonna struggle a bit. Overall, I like this product. For 30 bucks with its above average solo charging speeds as well as the size, like this thing is so small. It's a banger of a deal. Now this was surprising because number four goes to a brand that usually blows chunks my testing. These guys. Number four goes to the Belkin Boost Charge Pro. This is a 45 watt dual port charger. Now I bought this product off of Amazon. It was said it was new, but somebody had already used it. So good job, Amazon. This 45 watt charger has two ports and the wattage is split 25 for the top and 20 for the bottom. So depending on the device, pick the right hole. And one of the neat things I did notice is that some companies will label how much wattage is coming out their ports. Other companies are dinks and they don't. Now the prongs on this charger collapse, which is needed because the size of this charger is actually above average. It looks pretty small, but it's, it's a chunky one, especially when compared to uh, the number five charger. Overall, this is a very bland looking charger. It's white and it's smooth. Now my charge test, solo charging my iPad was very average, but solo charging my iPhone was actually faster than average. The best thing about this product was actually the max charging test. It was one of the fastest, which again is very surprising to me because Belkin stuff is usually just a hot bunch of steaming garbage. Now I note that this charger runs a little hotter than average, which seems odd given its larger size, but it's not that heavy, which means Belkin kind of cheaped out on the heatsink, I think. Belkin's products are usually overpriced, but at the $30 range, this is actually one of their better deals. So if you're planning on getting one of these chargers, make sure you use my links. I'm a reviewer, not an influencer. I don't care which one you get. I get an affiliate commission for anything that you buy through my links. So if it's helpful, if this video has been helpful to you, use my links. Support is greatly appreciated. Thanks. Number three goes to this brand called Volt Me. Volt you? Volt me? I was a little surprised with this product. In the top five, this is gonna be your best bang for your buck. If you could get over some of its, we'll say, oddity. First of all, this charger has three ports, two Cs, one A. Now on the website, Volt me does say that it's one of the smallest 65 watt chargers out there, but in my test group, it's actually one of the bigger ones. Now this charger does look pretty good. There's a bit of texture on the outside, so pulling on it uh, is a bit easier. The insulation housings are orange, so it kind of gives it a nice contrast. There's an indicator light, but unlike this Oh, he doesn't tell you when it's charging or not. It just tells you it has power. And last but not least, the prongs are collapsible. Now you would think collapsible prongs is a standard feature on some products. It's not. Why? Now the max wattage for this charger is 65 watts. If you're using just one USB-C port, it's 65. But if you're using two of the three ports, one port's gonna give you 45 watts, the other one's gonna give you 18. And that's the oddity that I'm talking about. If you're charging an iPhone and an iPad through this charger, only one of those devices is gonna be charging at its fastest rate. All the uh, three port chargers that I've tested, this is the only one that doesn't give 20 watts to the second port. Now, if you're charging with all three ports, one port's gonna be 45 watts and the other two get to share 15 watts. Like that's just brutal. So that's the oddity you have to deal with. Charge wise, this thing is very, very fast for solo charging. But if you're doing multiple devices, this thing just blows chunks. And by chunks, it's just average. <laughs> Let's not get carried away here. Now overall, this is an above average charger according to my ranking system. The two things that kind of bumped the uh, ranking for this product up is a price is 40% lower than the average uh, charger that I've tested at $25. And it runs a bit cooler, which means it's gonna last a little longer because heat and electronics don't mix. That was number three. This is number two, the ArcStation Pro GAN 452 wall charger. To be clear, this version 
Not this version. Both of these products are called the exact same thing, but one of them is definitely better. Like this guy was released in 2022. This guy was released in 2023. Get this one, not this one. If you think having two different products with the same name is confusing, we'll just wait to the number one. Now for craps and giggles, I tested both these chargers in this video. Most notable difference is that one has collapsible prongs, which is awesome. And the other thing has to deal with the speaking symbol. On this newer version, the speaking symbol is embedded into the side of the uh, charger, so it's easy to, you know, pull out. Out of the socket, I mean. Now this is a 45 watt charger, and between these two ports has a wattage split of 25 watts and 20 watts between the top and bottom. If you're using both, if you're just using a single port on this charger, you get 45 watts, which is awesome. This charger is slightly smaller than the uh, Belkin, the number four pick. And Spigen has three different colors for you to choose from. I really do like the look of the charger. I'm glad they just didn't go with white and smooth. The port facing part is a little darker and there's a chamfering along the edge, which just makes it look nicer instead of just smooth and white. When it came to charge speeds for solo iPhone charging, it was very average. Solo tablet charging was above average. And for whatever reason, multi-device charging, this was one of the best that I've tested. This product's gonna set you back $45, which is $10 cheaper than the average charger in my video. So if you're looking for a great deal and a dual port charger, this is the best one to get. It's the Spigen ArcStation Pro GAN 452. Such a mouthful. All right, onto the number one charger. It goes to Anchor. The GAN Prime Charger, 65 watts. So this is the 735 charger from two years ago. This is the 735 charger from a year ago. They are not the same product, obviously. Different sizes, like they are one model number difference, but the product name is exactly the same. So oddly enough, I did test the old one versus the new one, and this is actually number four overall, but I disqualified it because yeah. So if you're planning on getting this product, use my link because I will encode the actual model number into the link uh, so that you get the new version, not the older version. Though the older version is still pretty good. This thing is a 67 watt charger. It has three ports, two C's, one A. Now if you only use one port, the max wattage is 67. If you use the two ports, it gets split however your device consumes it. On my iPad, I saw it pull about 35 watts. My max device charging, I saw the uh, top one pull 35 watts and the bottom one pull 20 watts. I'm assuming the maximum wattage is gonna be 45 and 20. That's my guess. Now one of the neat things about this product is that it weighs a ton. It weighs the most out of all the products I've tested, but isn't the biggest. Like this is the Volt Me charger. This is the the uh, anchor and the volt me one is substantially larger which is a good thing and i'll get into it now the insulation housings on this product are blue this face is kind of a light gray and it's got kind of a reflective thing to it i don't know what companies are doing but the charger designs from the last year are top notch like it just these things look really nice now from a charging perspective this charger was consistently in the top five for all my tests it shined during the max port test i think it was number four in solo i think it was number two in ipad and overall it was about number five now despite the great charge speeds this product ran the coolest out of all the ones i've tested which makes sense because it's the heaviest heavier charger bigger heat sink better heat dissipation. And when it comes to price, this thing is 5% more than the average charger in my test group, but it performs the best, runs the coolest, which means it's gonna last the longest. You wanna hear a funny story? The old version actually cost me $5 more than the new version, so I don't know. So that's all I got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. First time watching my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. And again, if you found this video useful, make sure you use my links. I'm a reviewer, not an influencer, couldn't care less which version you got, as long as you use my video to figure out the best charger for your needs. Anyways. Thanks for watching.